was that these people were sophisticated, that there was fucking crazy types of technology before us. But the us. problem is they're looking for is that we oh, don't yes. know oh, shit. You see we what I'm saying? We don't know nothing. We can never they look, prove Yeah, that's what it is. We never know. They, they denying it because there's no documentation. We're never going to know. Who has the answers? And welcome back, everyone, to Gobekli Tepe, episode motherfucking 10. What we up? We made it. Double we made digits. It double digits. Let's go. Um, y- y'all thought we, we wasn't gonna. <laughs> yeah. No, we've been modifying times and playing out with dates. Sorry about that. But um, conclusively, looks like it might be upload time. Upload day will be Tuesday, and I think upload time might be 8 or 9 p.m., um but yeah like episode 10 double digits like here we are it's been two and a half months since we started this kind of crazy right yeah absolutely so just to introduce ourselves i'm uh juan ignacio i'm in berkeley california and you are juan rebufo or jp or juan pablo whatever you want i'm currently in new york um so yeah i'm on the east side he's on the west side and we're coming at you on what is it monday night yeah monday night um so yeah episode 10 we got searching up on the board for main topic of the week great movie um we'll talk about it and for our mini topic we got something really spicy that fucking hopefully scared, all like, of you have heard yeah i'm hoping i mean like some it's, fire it's just been it's it, it was a surprise kamikaze by eminem lots to say about it uh lots that i want to talk about it and yeah and we got a couple of updates not too many overall um, but a couple of updates that I feel at least coming from my side. So let's get right into it, right? Yeah, let's just jump into it. All right, so firstly, um, music related wise, we got, of course, our mini topic, which will be Eminem's Kamikaze. This dropped randomly Thursday night, aka Friday release, um, Thursday midnight. And honestly, uh, a lot to say about it, which is hence why we're going to keep it at a mini topic. A lot to say about it, um, and I don't know. I, I think that it's it's been crazy that we've even gotten this kind of drop out of fucking nowhere right at the end of the summer. Um, okay, within that music realm, we had Logic drop a first single called The Return, which followed his little uh, Bobby Tarantino 4 freestyle. And I gotta say, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm hyped because my my liking for Logic is very polarizing, I feel. Um, I feel like when he first started, um, I loved him. And when he came out with, I mean, again, music is music, right? It's, it's, it's subjective. But I love The Incredible True Story. I love Bobby Tarantino. Um, sorry, I said Bobby Tarantino 4, but it's Young Sinatra 4, freestyle, that he dropped recently. Um, But yeah, and so then he got into the next album after that, which we all know some of you may love it, some of you may hate it. I thought it was okay. It was like... um, It wasn't great, but... Yeah, it wasn't great, but he had to say something and he got it off his chest and I think he was very self-aware of of where that album stood in comparison to the rest of his discography. And then he dropped Bobby and Tarantino too, right? Yeah. And I thought that was great. It was a bit of a... It was was like a mix... It's like a throwback. Yeah, it was like a throwback with a mix of new Bobby, but I will say the return is very classic Bobby, and I'm very, very, very much looking forward to it. So, a lot of information on Bobby. He's got the freestyle that he came out with, and then he has the return. Also, um, not super, super new, but I feel like it was worth mentioning just because for those listening, actually, this actually might be dropping while uh, Sheck West is performing, but I've I've been a huge fan of Sheck West for months now. Maybe I think probably over yeah no I've, over a year at this point. And Sheck West, for those who don't know, is signed to Cactus Jack, uh, which is Travis Scott's label, and he has this song that's been blowing the fuck up over the last couple of months called Mo Bamba. And Mo Bamba is a fucking banger. It's like literally the song that I would use to open up any DJ set in my opinion. Like it's fantastic. And he's released a song called Chippy Chippy. And the reason why I mention any NYU students who are listening to this, if you went, like, NYU, the NYU Mystery Concert is happening Tuesday night. So when this is going to air, it's going to be happening that night. And Sheck West is headlining it. So 
best bet you'll catch me there love Shaq and um and people gotta be really put him on their radar because to be honest like he's blowing the fuck up I mean he was on Travis's new album so so yeah that's pretty much it um other than that there are I mean Bat Bass released an album called Milky Way which features a song called Tribe which features um J. Cole that's that I've been bumping literally all week um just because I love the vibe I think both of them are killing it on that song and uh I don't know what can I say um Juan any other updates I mean I feel like there are a lot of movies coming out but we're, we we kind of just talk about them as we go watch them but anything yeah pretty much i mean it too is finished filming but that's not like really we're probably not going to talk about it yeah <laughs> it it was a great movie like great horror movie that like honestly i got the attention it, it deserved honestly yeah um surprisingly but i, think, good I, I hope movie. we get to cover it too though i want to maybe maybe for we'll a do or... like a dual episode yeah yeah for both of them oh yeah yeah, yeah. i mean I would love, I, I feel like it's too much, right? But I would love to talk about the originals versus the new. Have you seen the originals at all or no? I haven't, not yet. Okay. The originals are fan-fucking-tastic, in my opinion. It's a two-parter, uh, mini, like, it, it was a TV series, but it's an hour and a half, hour and a half, so three hours total. And it's wonderful. So I think it would be cool to do, like, a comparison between old and new. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. But, um... Yeah, other than that, I don't really have much to say. I don't okay. have too many updates. Um, busy yeah. week, pretty much, for me. But... Yeah, yeah, shout out to all those people. I mean, like, NYU starting school here. Um, you already started school, which is crazy to believe, actually. Um, you missed a grad student over here. And I'm still undergrad. I'm a senior, though, for those who don't. Shout out to, like, all the people who are listening to me who know, who go to school with me. Anyways... Um, I feel like I want to dive right into sort of like this, um, what's it called? Searching, yeah, because, yeah. I mean, we don't even have that much time this week because, uh, I mean, we're probably going to talk about Kamikaze more than we talk about s- most mini topics. I feel yeah, this yeah. is more split in, in two two topics. Yeah, I don't want to kill, I don't want to kill the time this week for, for, for the sake of the two great topics that we have. Um, because there's a, I think me and you as inherent Eminem fans, there's a lot to say about this album. Honestly, if I had known this was coming out, this would be our main topic. Yep, honestly, yeah, pretty much. But, you know, here we are. Uh, okay, so let's delve into Searching. I feel like, uh, Juan, give, me, give us a, kind of like an introduction to Searching, what it's about um, plot-wise. Yeah, so Searching is a, a movie about a father who all of a sudden loses his daughter. Um, she disappears it's it's in modern times so like even with her phone right like he can't find her he doesn't know where she's gone um, and he can't get in contact with her so he basically starts trying to talk to her friends um, to, and uh, researching her life to try to find where she went or where she might have gone and he starts finding things out about his daughter that maybe um, maybe he didn't want to know um and i mean basically it's just it, it's an investigation movie and it's done in a really interesting fashion which i've only seen done in the um i talked about it before the unfriended franchise one right. of uh good one of the the good shitty movies out there to watch i would <laughs> definitely recommend both of them uh but the point is it's it's an interesting format to record in because basically the entire thing is on a computer screen so they're just watching the computer screen um you you just watch the computer screen and see it develop and um so everything's done through skype video or like a youtube video or um like whatever the computer's recording at the time um and it's really interesting because i mean it just kind of adds it's a new way to do storytelling yeah and i agree 100 percent. i think that the thing about this movie Right, which I think stands out from most films that I kind of try to do this is that they executed it really well. And it's interesting primarily because the concept of the film isn't inherently anything too baffling, right? Like you mentioned it, it's a father whose daughter goes missing. There's a detective that's the lead on the case. And he is 
very proactive in the sense that he wants to go out of his way to try and help the detectives as much as possible, right? When you think about the storyline, right, inherently, it's not that crazy. So when I pitch it to people, right, they're at first, they're like, okay, like, this sounds like it might have some sort of elements of horror. This sounds like, you know, it might be suspenseful. It might be a thriller. Like, you don't really know what's going on because it's because it, it's such a vague kind of plot. But I think the cream of the crop of this movie, like the reason why it's so phenomenal, or I mean, okay, that's a subjective opinion, but I feel like the, the reason why it's so creative and out there um, is that like literally every single shot in the film is is done through some sort of non-traditional camera. So we get Skype videos, we get FaceTime, we get uh, iMessage. News there reports. Is news reports, uh, cam like, like um, what are they called? Uh, security cameras, uh, live, live Surve- streams. Just r- regular surveillance cameras. Yeah, regular surveillance, like literally everything. And somehow the director, which, you know, huge props to the director because I feel like it's it's definitely not easy to do this kind of film. It's make definitely it one that's hard to put together. Yeah, it's hard to put together, and if anything, I feel like it's hard to make it consistently worth your like like to catch your eye constantly, right? Because there's so many movies that I feel they can be super extra, and they can have all the camera shots you want. Even if you delve into like animated, right? Animated stuff, um, your world is limitless essentially. And so yet, you know, sometimes films don't intrigue you in that same fashion. You can find, I find myself, like, sometimes I'll literally fall asleep in the theater. Um, Juan, you're not one to do that, but, like, I, I tend but to. But I have. But, but you I have. have. But you have. Um, sometimes this movies film, just get boring. No, yeah, 100%. But this film had me at the edge of my seat the entire time. And it was never, bo- it, it was never boring because of the format. I thought the format was brilliant, and I thought it was extremely well executed. So I, I honestly, I thought it was uh, quite slow up to a certain point where I thought it picked up. Um, watching it, the the beginning half was a bit kind of a drag, mm. um, where I was just like a little bit bored in my mind. I, mm. I thought that the format was interesting and there was a lot of cool stuff. In fact, uh, I've read that apparently there's like a whole lot of Easter eggs in the background where like they put entire side plots and just like sometimes he'll open his email and there's like little email snippets that you can read and there's like a whole little backstory that you can put together which is really cool no way um which makes it a really rewatchable movie right um so like sometimes you just like it's one that you want to go and like go through it and put together things and maybe find hints as to the the you know the who or what happened to his daughter after you know you know Mm -hmm. um there's a lot that you can maybe find out from like watching it and seeing the foreshadowing and it's pretty cool um that being said the first half kind of i don't know it really dragged for me because i felt like very little was happening and Mm -hmm. like they also like fake you out where they tell you like oh this is what happened um and i was like like i don't know at one point i was i I think i bought it and i was just like so it's over (laughs) like Well, no, here's the thing, and without delving into spoiler, spoilers just yet, but um, I I agree that the beginning was slow, but I think for me, right, the difference is that, like, I didn't think that was boring because the format and, like, the plot had me being like, okay, but where is this going to go? Yeah, like, no, I think that's I think what why happened. Me. What happened with me is that, like, part of it part of it was that one thing you should know going to this movie is that the trailers sell it as like this big thriller thing where like the father like starts finding out about the girl and like the girl is like doing all this crazy stuff to like apparently the the trailer implies that she's into some like really messed up shit and that like something really bad happens um and like they almost shoot that down immediately in the movie like it's really about a a father searching for his child it's not really about like you know ho- the horrible stuff that happens on the internet do you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah it's more like, about the pursuit of him trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with his daughter yeah like it, like i don't know there's there's i i felt that the trailers sold it as more of like what are all these horrible things that this girl's been doing and less of um 
what is the fa- like like this father's lost his child like okay. watch him do everything that he can to find her if anything though i will say this the trailer intrigued me but it was it didn't sell me the like i thought it i thought it was going to be a lot not worse per se but i didn't think it was going to be this good yeah to be no, fair it was, it was really good and especially once it picked up for me it did not slow down and it got yeah each is better and better and better yeah, yeah. um so I, what are you gonna say no nothing i mean definitely one of the more interesting things that i've seen this year yeah 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 um i think that like for me it's just super commendable because of again because of format alone right like sometimes we talk about films because they were innovative and they might not be great but they were innovative but i think this film goes innovative and great way of using that innovation to create a film that goes i think above and beyond what you would expect from this kind of format and that's all i really wanted to say i think that for me um i would definitely say it's a for this year i would put it on my must watch just because i feel like it's so different from what from anything else you're gonna go watch in theaters i mean putting it on a rating system from last week i would pretty much call it an it's eight okay um i don't know where you'd put it i i thought it was good but maybe not phenomenal you know yeah um i for me personally i would say it's like in between ish go one and is i like i feel like well that was good right that's just is good is good yeah it's just is good okay is good yeah i think it's good is good because like tbh like shit had me like i was sitting in the theater and i was like fuck like that's not what i was expecting at all yeah you know what looking back i did like it as much as i liked crazy rich asians so it's good okay okay yeah for me for me i will say this again um as i said last week if you if you know my opinion about crazy rich asians you should if you don't know it yet you should watch our last week's episode but for me, I felt like this did more justice in terms of like, in terms of, I want to say talent, I feel like this did more justice to like Asian representation in cinema because I think it was very well executed and I didn't think it was boring. That being said, you could probably argue that Crazy Rich Asians was perfectly fine in its, its representation of Asians because you liked it. I personally didn't like it, so I think Asian representation wise, talent wise, I think this movie takes the cake thus far in 2018. Um, I did think that the acting, John Cho's acting was better than anything in Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. Um, he was really good as a desperate father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so as well. So I think our conclusive rating for this film is is good. Is good. So you should definitely give it a watch, I think. If you haven't done so already, give it a watch because it's got some twists that you really don't expect. It's got various twists. It's got great acting. I think the format alone is intriguing to anyone who's even mildly interested in cinematography and directing. And overall, I think it's like one of those films that deserves a highlight at the very least uh, in 2018. Because Absolutely. Stuck out. The, the new format, I mean, the format is definitely, this is the best way to watch it. I, you shouldn't like the format has really only existed in pretty bad movies up till now and this is a really good one so it it proves you know it's a proof of concept for the formula for the format it's like i mean it's pretty much your new found footage and you know it's this really creative new way to watch a movie to experience a movie and i really do think that it's worth watching worth checking out and worth analyzing i mean it's an interesting design choice that like while it may not have been necessary it did make the movie a lot more interesting yeah 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 and with that being said i feel like this is a good time to mark spoiler section what do you think yeah totally yeah spoiler section right now i feel because i now i want to delve into some of the more uh logistical stuff about the movie and I, and so yeah so now we're going to talk about spoilers is there anything that you want to start off with that you felt like is like something that you got to get off your chest right now yeah man you know the movie picked up for me when the dad saw the girl's text to her uncle okay yeah Yeah. um there there were a few weird things about where like i was thinking like first my my first uh my first impression was shock for those who are listening and haven't watched the movie 
go watch it but also like the texts were literally like she's texting her uncle and she's like last night was so good last night was crazy like and then just like question like sometimes she'll be like tonight question mark and he'll be like yeah come over and i mean obviously it's implied that she was like sleeping with her uncle which is like horrifying right. and i mean other than you know being horrified my first thoughts were also like how is this not something that the police have found <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, and i was like what how have they not like caught on to this like how is her uncle abusive and they haven't even like mentioned him so like i mean later that, on we i guess we learned there's why, there's a but, reason yeah i mean yeah. clearly that the cops were incompetent for a very good reason right in this movie but um but yeah that that scene was so tense for me when he goes to the uncle and he like starts filming him and he's like you know accusing him pretty much and i'm just like holy shit if this is like real that's so fucked up like yeah how could he be taking advantage of his niece like that like, and I, and i think the director also does a very good play right where like i feel like that scene alone right was nervous like it was very nerve-wracking because you have this desperate father who was suddenly in shock right that that his his own brother could potentially be the reason why his daughter's missing or dead and or at least have some sort of clue as to what the fuck is going on and he hasn't said anything yet but for me right as if that weren't amped up already you have him you have john cho ignoring his phone and the detective is like hey we found the guy like we found the guy like we found the person who killed your daughter and so at the same time you're like dude pick up your fucking phone but then at the same time you're like uh like i don't know what's going on between him and his brother like what is really happening who is really the culprit and i was like the whole that entire scene had me fucking like wanting to scream like into the film and be like come on like someone do something you know what i mean yeah yeah no it was crazy like it really i don't know it was shocking me because i was like what what does she mean they got him right like right like you see all these texts from the police and you're just like what like so it's not the uncle but what about what what is the uncle you know and um, there's something interesting that i wanted to ask you this right because i feel like you you're very good at reading into uh hints in movies like better than i am primarily because like i get so stuck in the direction and the cinematography sometimes that i forget like to, to look at like the, the subtle hints that the movie will drop but i was watching the film with uh, a friend of mine shout out to sekai if you're listening um but i was watching it with a friend of mine and right after the scene ended or right as like he was about to accuse or i mean right after he had accused his brother um or being like yeah like what do you know about like my daughter like what do you know like because like hear the text he said he whispered in my ear he said he didn't do anything it's the weed and so for a second in my head i was like i'm confused right i was like i don't like i don't get what you're telling me but then i it made perfect sense to me because in the very beginning of the film right it yeah. hints it right at you he does me, point it out me right yeah because the thing is like what they tell you when you analyze film something that i learned um in taking a couple of film classes is that classes is that like a director will never hopefully right a good director will never highlight something in a movie early on and it, it just won't come back to it like it's always for a reason well i mean bad directors too that's like the chekhov's gun effect right but that's but that's what i mean though like i mean good directors right good directors will subtly hint at a few things or at one thing and and you might not catch it the first time but when you watch it again you're like oh my god like it was literally right there and the yeah. thing about sekai right thing about my friend is that he's very good at catching these things so at first he was panicked but like very very little into that scene he was like oh i bet you it's the weed he didn't tell me but then he told me later on and i was like god damn like it was in front of our face the whole time and so like what i wanted to ask you was like did you catch that at, like or did you or was it like a realization afterwards it was a realization afterwards for me yeah. i i'd love to say that i caught it but honestly i i was too invested in the scene yeah me too um i feel like it's very obvious going in but i don't know she had like his sweater and like it just really seemed and i completely forgot about the weed like i don't know i think that i was probably the brilliance should of it. have seen it i think that was the brilliance of it 
that you, it seems so stupid because it's brushed off in, in maybe three seconds, but I, I thought it was brilliant. I thought that when the whole thing was like put together, it's like, God damn, like, that was so smart. Um, and it almost low key upsets me because I want to say that like I try to look into films as much as possible, but I really can't. Like I'm just not good at it. I, I get myself in that too too invested in like everything else, and so I get tricked pretty easily during movies. And I, I gotta say that was a, that was a very good scene, very tense. Um, yeah. However, did, did you believe for a moment that the guy that was framed to have killed her was the actual killer? No. Yeah. No, I thought that was dumb. And if that, like, I was watching and I'm like, this isn't right. Right. It right, must right. be someone else. I honestly, like, my next my next suspect was the cop. And then I was like, but why? Like, <laughs> I was just like, no, nah, it must have been, it must have been the cop. And I'm just like, hmm, why would it be the cop? Okay. That so you, so you did, sense. you did have a minor suspicion at the at that point. Yeah. I had a suspicion of it being the cop um i honestly when the when the girl's picture popped up uh like where where it was like this is fish and chips or whatever yeah yeah. right like i didn't see fish and chips i was like like i saw that picture and i'm like oh my god it's the cop and then i'm like oh wait no that's not the cop <laughs> oh my god no i was i was i was uh, lucky enough to see it in a full theater and the audience caught on immediately when they when the picture pulled up of like the the streaming service Oh yeah, there were thank you. There were gasps. Oh yeah, people were like, (gasps) and I immediately was like, no fucking way. But the thing is, like, I still couldn't put the connect the dots. Like, it still didn't make sense to me until it was explained. Oh, I mean, once that picture popped up and I realized who it was. I mean, well, once I realized it was like fish and chips, I was like, oh, so it's like the person she met online. Okay, it still didn't connect that it was the cop. Right, right. That that's the thing that had me baffled. Um, still so shocking yeah no absolutely and like what what someone's willing to do for their child that's like incredible because I mean it's it's kind of true in a way right people are kind of crazy when it comes to their children yeah I mean but the funny part is that again that is hinted in the very beginning of the movie in their first interaction where they talk about or one of the first when they talk about um, the idea that the the cop had been willing to front for his son for her son when he had lied to the neighborhood about that donation fund or whatever it's funny because you 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 see that as almost like a white lie right because you're like oh you know like you're a parent like you're embarrassed for your child but like it's whatever but it's funny how that translates into the craziest of a scenario at the end of the movie you know yeah yeah no totally it's like like i don't know it's kind of insane yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. she basically tells him that she's like i'll do anything for my son and i mean she did she covered up a murder yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well um, attempted murder exactly which is another thing i wanted to talk about i love that she survived i really do um i kind of i was like I feel like if she didn't survive, it just wouldn't have been as satisfying for me. Because sure, they caught the guy. They avenged it, I guess. But like, you know, this poor girl just dies for no reason. Like, like because she wants to be help, because she wants to help someone and then there's an accident. No, like her surviving kind of made it for me. Yeah, at first I was, I was a little bit thrown off because they don't quite perfectly explain the logistics behind why she's awake. I mean, they mentioned the the days that the days between like um the father reacting to this whole missing case thing and then like the rainfall meaning that she technically was drinking water and could have survived with all that i thought for a second they were pushing the envelope but i was actually very satisfied and i think my biggest satisfaction of her being alive is the final scene where we see basically the the last possible thing that one of the last one of the first things that's brought up in the film right is him being conflicted about telling his daughter that his that their uh, deceased mother just is... talking about the mother exactly that that as a whole but even more so that she's proud of her right that she's mm-hmm. proud of her daughter and for me I think the fact that she lives and the fact that he's able to be like hey 
mom would be proud too that shit literally had me in tears like i was like fuck like i never knew one text could literally hit my heart that hard like i was like fuck like that's it's intense you know what i mean like it's intense and it was i think powerful. it was a satisfying yeah. ending it was very satisfying not to mention the whole the mother thing was was pretty powerful in itself i mean yeah i wasn't expecting that opening i mean honestly once i saw the mother i knew she was gonna die because of the trailers right like you don't see the mother once and it's just the dad freaking out so like i was just like yeah the mom's dead but um even knowing that it was like a really intense scene kind of like up uh <laughs> the first five minutes of up right right, right. Yeah, yeah yeah same concept yeah yeah and I think, and I think that's how I wanted to mention this to you. One of the points that I didn't want to forget to talk about was the whole concept of the way films make you attached to characters, right? The way they make you feel for the characters. And I feel like very oftentimes, bad movies do this thing where they want you to care for the characters. They really do. And I think this is this is a bit. I disagree with this, but like for the sake of the argument, right? I think you had an extremely difficult time finding any likability towards the three billboards characters. Um, I think you disliked all of them very I unilaterally. Them. I still do. Yeah, and except the redhead guy that got beaten up for no reason. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was a shame. But for you, right? Like you hated all the characters, and so whenever something happened, you weren't that empathetic about anything because, like, you know, you're like fuck them. And I think that a lot of, and that's a bad example because I think that overall like i felt very empathetic and i connected with a lot of them but bad films will oftentimes not allow you to connect to a character and so when they pass away or when something happens you're kind of just like okay whatever but i think the beauty of the first five minutes of the movie is that without really doing much other than compiling a a memoir essentially of or or, or a or a a, a telling of this family's life from like the moment that the daughter's born to when the mother passes away i think that it was so beautiful the way they made you care care about all the characters from the get-go right like there was no need to build on on live like sort of like situations and like make you want to like the daughter because of the interaction with the father no it was like a whole thing it was like a montage that from the get-go was like oh i i like her passing away, like even though you knew it was happening, it still hit me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I feel like the beauty of that, right, is that very little films ever get to really do that, where they connect you to a character immediately. And I think that was something else that this film did very beautifully. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and I and I think that that's worth noting, just simply because, like, I don't think that, like, I I think that this is something that films should take more time with right which is development of character to make you like them and so when they're taken away from you it makes you feel some type of way yeah and i mean you totally it made you totally understand the girl's motivation for not like wanting to play piano and not wanting to talk to her dad anymore and like i don't know it just kind of like put things into a perspective where you could get into the teenage girl's mind and understand right and also, this is something more, I guess, for me and you, right? Last thing I want to mention, um, at least on my ha on my end. But I thought it was super interesting because the timeline, because it's cool because the, the way that the first five, ten minutes progress, right, when it's telling you about the story of the family, it also goes technologically in order, right? And for me, I thought it was so intriguing as someone being born in the late 90s and... Um, and kind of seeing, right, the movement up of like from Windows, what was it, 98 to then like Windows 2000 and then going up and up and then getting a Mac. Like that progression felt very nostalgic to me because I oh, remember yeah. booting up my first Windows 98 computer. And then I remember like the, the upgrade. Maze game. And then you, yeah, exactly. I remember everything about it, the folders, the system, the, right. What did you call it? Oh no, the maze game, the one that the they maze played, the game, scary right. maze. Right, right. This is the maze game, like everything about that was so relevant, at least to people in our generation, right? Yeah. And so for me like, watching it, I was like, fuck, like this is low key nostalgic too, you know? Yeah, it kind of just reminded us of our childhood, which was always a good thing. And then, you know, hit us in the heart. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was like an element that didn't need to be in the movie, but I think added to it, at least for me personally, or for anyone yeah. who's 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 had that same experience with computers. Like I, I resonated with that a lot. Um, but that's the last thing I wanted to mention um, in regards to that film for me. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? No, nothing in particular. Okay, okay, yeah. So overall, I mean, this is a spoiler section, right? So hopefully you ag- agreed, disagreed, leave a comment in uh, on the YouTube box or like, I don't know, give us shout us out in an email or shout us out on Instagram, whatever you want. Um, but let us know what you think. Like if you agreed, disagreed, I think the movie was is good is good i think it was it's rewatchable i think it has a a powerful story and i would recommend if you've listened to it thus far and you haven't watched it yet then i still think it's worth going just because like for the sake of it it's a great film that deserves some merit and 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 even if you know the plot i think the way in which it develops with the technology is a big big innovation and i think it's done right for the first time so we've seen thus far so that's that's for me um any added and any last comments yeah so i mean you should go watch it it's a really nice innovative way to tell a story and i mean hopefully it catches on and they do more creative things with it because um honestly it's just kind of a nice like we all use computers every day and they take up more and more of our lives so being able to tell full stories using just the screen that's really cool yeah and so with that being said uh let's take a small break I want to throw it really back with a song of the week this week. Uh, Scar Tissue by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, me and you grew up with the song, I feel. Um, and I don't know. It's funny because me and you haven't really spoken too much this week, throughout the week. But it's been kind of interesting uh, that we both stumble upon the song this weekend. Yeah, to we it both again. heard it today. Yeah, today in particular. And, and I don't know. I feel like I want to reminisce for a little bit. So... We're going to play Scar Tissue by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and we'll be right back. Scar Tissue that I wish you saw. Sock captain, Mr. Know It All. I'll close your eyes and I'll kiss you, cuz with the birds I'll share. With the birds I'll share this.
All right, and we're back from Scar Tissue by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. I, I hope that it kind of went, uh, took a little nostalgia trip the way we had it. Um, and I hope that that kind of took you by surprise, right? Like, not, we're not always going to do some recent stuff. But definitely felt that uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers homage kicking in this week. So wanted to shout that out. Um, okay, let's very, very quickly or like... Um, for the time remaining that we have talk about our mini topic which came as a super surprise super 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 surprise um the new eminem album called kamikaze uh juan i know that i had to send it to you early morning you know how i am i wake up and when i see it i send it and uh i don't know man i listened to the ringer first thing and i was just fucking ecstatic i was just really happy Look, I'm not going to lie, I got the messages about the new Eminem album, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> I actually, like, made an ugh sound, because I was like, I have to listen to this. Like, his last album, like, I had to I had to slog through. I did not like his flow. I didn't like me- most of the songs. I was just, like, annoyed by it. And, right. and especially knowing how good Eminem could be. And when you said... Eminem is back. I was just like, oh, he's just hyped. The Eminem <laughs> surprise drop. Like this, there's no way that this is gonna be any good. Like I don't even want to listen to it. Like I'm just gonna save it for later. I didn't even have my headphones on me, so I was like, whatever. I'll listen to it later. And then later on the day, I was headed to uh, like a job thing, and I get there and like or no i i get in my car and i'm like oh well i guess i should listen to the new eminem album so i put it on and holy shit the ringer comes on and it just goes and it goes because it's a long song and it goes and it goes and it gets harder and harder and better and i'm just like what is happening since (laughs) when is eminem actually good again like he just goes off and he just like absolutely destroys everyone like it's so good and there's so much like kind of like and it vibes with me because i do not like modern soundcloud rap and he's just like talking trash and i'm just like yes you can't (laughs) compete with slim shady and like he's absolutely back and i couldn't believe it honestly especially especially on like how like he on an artistic level won't admit that revival wasn't good he says that we didn't like it but like he defends it with his life which i guess maybe it's like super artsy and like has some like crazy musical merit to it but man did it not like vibe with me i couldn't bump to it you know yeah so like i don't care like i don't know he was there's one part where he's like he, he goes through one of his flows in revival and he's like i didn't just rhyme like something with something i was rhyming the entire sentence and i'm like great that's creative but like man did it sound boring right right, yeah yeah, yeah. like and even when he did it like in this as an ad lib i was like oh what like that is why i didn't like revival because you said things like that <laughs> like because you weren't rapping you were just kind of like doing slam poetry like it was so weird um and that's what i didn't like about it but now he's got his flow back and i'm just like jesus christ welcome back freaking the uh the ringer is my favorite like eminem song since probably uh i mean i guess rap god but like even even before that it might even be like you know marshall mathers lp2 like this is so good right i mean lp1 right like um and and i gotta say yeah i mean like here's the thing right the reality is my ass was like up at like of course two in the morning or whatever and i started getting these twitter notifications from a lot of people who are like oh my god like i never realized how much i missed eminem until now and so I was like sitting there, right? I didn't really like, thing is like, I, that didn't, some people will reminisce at random times. So I was like, oh, this is just another person who just started listening to like the Marshall Mathers LP one and was like, I miss Eminem. And so in my head, I was like, same dog, same. Like I miss him too, but like, I don't know what the fuck you want me to say. And so I woke up in the morning to a notification that was like, Eminem randomly drops Kamikaze. 
And I was like, oh fuck. So I thought, okay, it's a single, whatever. Like, okay, he's preparing for a new album. I opened that shit on Apple Music and it's a full 13 track album. I was like, what the fuck? And so it's incredible because at first I was like, okay, right? Like I'm looking at it and I had the same doubt, not gonna lie. I had the same doubt. I was sitting there and I was like, how good can this be? Like, it's only been a year. Like, right, come right, on. right, right. It's been a year. Like, last album was unfortunate. It's like, last album for me, the way I would describe it is he had something to get off his chest and he wanted to be politically relevant. And I commend him for that. I just don't think he's the right person to do that. Like, I don't think he's, he, he, what he said was relevant for when he said it. And so the album was a flop. And, and and that was like unanimously agreed, it was a flop. And so for me, it was like, okay, he's dropping a random album. What could this be? And I again, I turn on the ringer as I start showering and I was in fucking shock. Like I was like, what am I listening to? It's as if I had transported back to when I liked Eminem. It's a track, it's a track from back in time, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and So good. It was surreal. I was like closing my eyes and I was like, fuck, like this is what I needed from M this entire time. And I knew you would doubt me when I said M is back. But that's why I texted it. Cause I was like, I, you need to, you need to, you need to believe me. Um, no, it was crazy too, because actually on Thursday, uh, because we're like three hours apart, right? Like he dropped at midnight over there, which is 9 p.m. here. Right. And we like, like I was on Reddit like that night and I remember reading, uh, um, I, I, there was a post that was like, Eminem's going to do a song called Venom for the Venom movie. And I was like, ugh, because yes. <laughs> I am not looking forward to Venom yeah, um, at all. I think the trailers have looked really bad. I think that Tom Hardy's putting on some stupid accent. And I think that, like, honestly, like, Tom Hardy's the only good thing about this movie. Mm -hmm. And it's really frustrating to me that it's not part of the Marvel Universe and that there's no Spider-Man. And it doesn't make any sense. And I'm not happy about it. But I'm going to watch it. It'll probably be a shitty, shitty movie segment or something. <laughs> um, Ooh, that's that's a big claim right there. But okay. Oh, we'll I'm, see. It's, it's going to be like a turd in the wind, Ooh. which for those of you who don't know is a fucking line in the movie. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I saw that Eminem wrote, a, he's going to write a song for it. And I'm like, oh, it's Suicide Squad all over again. Like good artists writing music for garbage. And like, I don't know. I, I, I went in the comments and they were like, someone was like yeah no like if he raps anything like he did in revival like i'm not gonna like it um i'm like absolutely sick of this weird start and stop flow that he's got going on and then someone commented and they were like then you're gonna love his new the new thing the the his recent project his most recent project is what he wrote and i thought that was like sarcasm i was like like he would love revival because no right right <laughs> And then you texted me the next morning, which I guess, because I guess it was out at that point. Right, like right, Just right. out. Yeah. And then you texted me the next morning and I'm like, oh my God, I should have got, I should have gotten the memo. I should have ch just checked Spotify. He dropped something. Oh man. And it was so good. Yeah. And I think that he's so like, good. No one's safe. That's the reality. This album, no one's safe. And I love, I love particularly, right? Because I love when he gets meta. These Paul Rosenberg skits that he's had throughout his entire discography. Right? At least the good the good ones have this these skits. And Paul Rosenberg is so fucking meta, right? In this in this tape. He's like, Yeah. Are you sure it's a good idea to just randomly drop an album where you're just dissing everyone and just fucking he's like, What's what's the next thing? Kamikaze two where you respond to them responding to you? And I was like, That's fucking hilarious. But like Eminem would be the type of guy to do that. Like Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so funny. And like it's almost weird because you look at his discography and he's got like an every other one kind of like thing right. going ever since um, Relapse, maybe? No, he's been the, the Paul Rosenberg thing? No, 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 no. Like Eminem's albums have been on and off good, bad, good, oh, bad, yeah, good, yeah, bad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and even, I mean, like the, you can say what you will about Marshall Mathers LP2, but I think it's good. I don't think it's amazing, but it's not like bad. No, no, no. I, I think it's, um, a, it's a good album. I just don't think it's great. That being said, I mean, pretty much he just started going down after after the Eminem show, 
and then he started coming back with Marshall Mathers LP2, and then, he, like, Revival was garbage, and then here we are with Kamikaze. It's actually good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that, like, anyone who's a big M fan, if you haven't checked it out, what the fuck are you doing with your life, first of all? But there's a lot to to take apart from this mo- from this movie what the fuck am i saying from this album um from start to finish i feel like there's a lot that he says there's even a diss track for drake and black boy called not alike which is supposed to be a diss so to good. look alive i it's thought it was so fantastic good. he I literally love interpolates look alive, the beat but like yeah, yeah no i love both of them so much but i i i rock hard to both of them like i re- i was straight up because they're both great um, i love nice guy so good yeah yeah nice guy's really funny honestly the first two the first two greatest in the ringer they are like classic m yeah me. they're just so good and like even just like the greatest because like it just it sounds like him again he's just like yeah no i'm the fucking best fuck you yeah yeah yeah. like and like i don't know it was so good there was there was one that i thought was like super out of place that was like a weird love song but mm-hmm. like other than that the album was so good and here's and my my final thought about this is that I think the reason why this 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 album worked out so well is because he did he he did a full combination that he's never tried before, right? Which is old flow mixed with new flow because he does a lot of new flow stuff. Whether it's because he's mocking artists or because he's just using the flows, like he does Amigos flow in one of them. Um, Dude, when he does the Gucci Gang flow, yeah, I'm yeah. like in the ringer oh it's so good Mm -hmm. he's like fuck you little pump i know and that's the thing like i feel like even when he's doing it ironically it sounds great and i'm glad that he's playing around with different flows even if it's for the for the for the fun of it because it works out so well he kills it he kills it every time and the other thing i'm going to say is this the beats on this on this on this uh, album are fire as hell again because he's fully modernized again even ironically on not alike he interpolates um uh, look alive which was which is produced by tay keith he interpolates it but then the the second beat that that kicks in when he starts going off towards the end again it's by ronnie J. again new jersey represent ronnie J is a producer from new jersey so i always got to say that but ronnie J, like he's a modern soundcloud rapper and eminem fully went with that beat and fucking murdered it um and that's what i think was so good about this album that he he killed it old way he killed it new way like i think it was overall like something that needed to happen and he finally like modernized you know what i mean he like updated I think I think Eminem did what he does best, and he just proved that he can do whatever you do, but better. Right. And and I think that's that's a good good place to like leave it at. Um, I will say, however, you know, like downside of this is that I think that Eminem he's always been controversial. Obviously, um, he still says a couple of things that are a little, you know, like even though like it's ironic, right? Because he's the revival was supposed to him being was supposed to be him being woke, and I think that in this album he still says some pretty pretty problematic stuff. But um, and not to discount it, obviously that's why I'm mentioning it. But I think that from a music's point of view, this is a killer album that we needed from Eminem, and I think that he's moving forward in the right direction. Finally, like this is like his best foot forward he's put on so far since. I want to say since even before Marshmallow's LP2, like I, again, I like that album, but I think this one takes a cake for best since the 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 what was it the Eminem show? Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. No, this is the best since for sure. Yeah, I think I think this is like I I need to listen to it a few more times, but this is an absolutely solid solid album. Like, uh, I just wish I don't know. I I I want to say this is him coming back, but honestly. We can't. It's I too soon kinda, to call. I, I kind of want him to stop here. <laughs> just stop on a high note. Right. He retired after Marshall Mathers LP two supposedly. Right. Like just do it. Just actually retire. Just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know how the music industry is. We'll never really know until it's over. But hey, for now, enjoy Kamikaze. Uh, definitely our what what i've been streaming all week other than the red hot chili peppers i guess but yeah um i think that's it right that's our mini topic of the week 
Um, yeah, I think so. I do want to mention one thing that I didn't mention up front. Uh, Donald Glover dropped a new music video for uh, Feels Like Summer. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, it's not super like relevant to this, but I mean, it might be implying that the album's coming soon because this is the first or second single off the album that is should be hitting any day now. Plus, he's got his tour soon, so like. So we're hoping for that blessing. Uh, we're hoping we're hoping for a surprise drop on Tuesday. Like, you don't even know. Or Thursday um, night. You never know. I feel like I the, mean it, the music drops are usually totally Friday, happen. So. The thing is, he dropped he dropped an he dropped two music videos and like you know two singles. Like it's all it's pretty much time. It's time for him to do the the album itself. Whew, I, I just wish so. he said something. I just really wish he said something. Yeah. Well. We'll know when we know, and for the audience, for the people listening right now, you will 100% know, because we will be all over that shit. Um, But yeah, with that being said, I think uh, media for next week, we concluded, was The Nun. Um, One of the horror films that I think follows, what, The Conjuring series, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I believe so. And yeah, it's a horror film. Let's see how it goes. I like The Conjuring a lot. I didn't like Annabelle. They're all, uh, what is it called, canon, from my understanding. Um, but but we'll see. Yeah, they're like a little shared universe that they're right. creating. And so I'm pretty sure the nun falls within that little universe. Um, and yeah, we will see. I love, we both love horror, so we'll have our criticism, whether good or bad, for next week. So definitely make sure to catch the nun for next week if you're into horror. Um, that's going to be our media for next week, and that is going to conclude our episode 10. Um, definitely thanks for listening thanks for keeping up with us thanks for shifting uh, your time schedules to keep listening we've had some pretty good numbers lately so I'm happy for that Uh, make sure to check us out on Instagram at our personal accounts everything is linked in the uh, description below but also on our Go Back to Tepe podcast Instagram which is literally that's the handle Um, and tag us tag us and everything comment whatever follow us whatever you want Uh, we're all over the place so yeah thanks for listening to episode 10 two and a half months uh, two digit number at this point and catch us next week with the nun so yeah uh, peace out